video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. We're given two semicircles and two equal circles. And I kind of like that it looks like a smiley face. It's giving us that the yellow area is equal to 16 and it wants to know what is the total black area. So that's going to be this stuff with the circles cut out of it. The circles are not part of the black area. If you want to try it on your own, pause it right now because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. I think it'll be easier if we color in these empty spots. Let's color in these equal circles blue and let's color in this region red. So we have the two equal circles. We have this semicircle and then we have this semicircle. Let's assign a radius of X for these circles. Let's assign a radius of Y for this semicircle and a radius of Z for this semicircle. First, we're given that the yellow is equal to 16. Next, let's do the blue. If the radius is equal to X, then each circle would be pi X squared. And then because there's two of them, the blue region would be two pi X squared. Next, let's do this semicircle right here. The area is gonna be pi Z squared divided by two because a semicircle is half of a circle. And the area of this semicircle is gonna be equal to red plus yellow. And we know the yellow is equal to 16, so let's update this yellow to be 16. And then let's get the red by itself. So let's subtract 16 from both sides of the equation, and that'll give us red is equal to pi z squared over two minus 16. And I kind of like the colors on this side, so let's swap them. And last, let's do this middle semicircle. It's gonna be pi y squared divided by two, and that's gonna be equal to the black region plus the blue region plus the red region. So we know that the blue region is equal to two pi x squared, so let's plug that in for blue. And then we know that the red region is equal to this right here, so let's plug that in for red. And then we can subtract all this stuff from both sides of the equation. On the right-hand side, all of this will cancel out. And now we have a formula for the black area. This looks important, let's put a box around it. Next, let's look at an outline of this thing and let's draw this right triangle. This left-hand side is the same length as the diameter of this circle. Since the radius is x, the diameter will be 2x. And this bottom side is the same length as the radius of this lower semicircle. So that'll be equal to z. And this hypotenuse is the same length as the radius of this other semicircle. So it's gonna have a length of y. Does that make sense, y? Now let's focus on this right triangle. Let's do the Pythagorean theorem. It'll give us the quantity 2x squared plus z squared is equal to y squared. This squared will distribute to both of these factors, giving us 4x squared. Now let's copy this down and then let's multiply everything by pi and then divide everything by 2. And now we have another cool looking equation. Before we move on, I'm noticing one thing real quick. This 4 and this 2 can simplify to be a 2 on top. And now we have a really cool equation. Notice how these two things are identical. That means that we can substitute all of this in the place of this. Let's give ourselves some room and in the place of this, we'll plug in this. And now for the fun part, we have a negative 2 pi x squared and a positive 2 pi x squared. Those can cancel each other out. And then we also have a negative pi z squared over two and a positive pi z squared over two. These can also cancel each other out. And now 16 is all that's left. So we have the answer to our question. This black area is equal to 16 square units. I really like this problem. I like the smiley face looking thing and I like how everything simplified in the end. It really was a brilliant problem. Speaking of brilliant, let's talk about brilliant. I love brilliant. It has thousands of lessons to choose from and all of them are interactive. You learn by actually doing. I've been traveling this summer and brilliant's made it easy and fun to keep learning new things. I finished up how technology works. It's really cool to see the inner workings of technology that we use every day. The next course I'm thinking of going through is this one here, Creative Coding. I went through Thinking in Code a couple months ago and I really enjoyed it. Creative Coding is the course that follows that one. I haven't started it yet, but from the titles, it looks like it covers variables, loops, patterns, randomness. I'm excited to go through it. And if you want to go through it yourself, Brilliant has a free 30-day trial. Visit brilliant.org slash andymath or visit the link in the description. You can also get 20% off an annual premium plan. How exciting.